Hello, and welcome to week 14 of English 120. This week, you'll be reading in the Valley of the Moon through chapters, uh, book 3, chapters 4 through 15. Plus, you'll be referring to sections of the Bedford Researcher that I refer to in my lecture. You'll also be participating in a discussion forum on um, the Valley of the Moon pages, um, and you'll also complete two research journal assignments. So this week, we're going to be having a conversation about the Valley of the Moon. Um, as always, please use evidence from the text to support your answers. And when you respond to your peers' posts, please make sure you do so in a way that extends the conversation. So let's start with who is, who is Mrs. Mortimer, and what does she teach Billy and Saxon about farming? What kind of farm does she have? What was Mrs. Mortimer, Mrs. Mortimer before she became a farmer? How is she a helper to Saxon and Billy? And I mean helper in the sense that they're on a heroic, um, they're on a heroic journey, um, and each of these people that they meet along the way are helpers. How is she different from, say, Mercedes? Um, what different lessons uh, does Saxon learn from her? I'd like you to look up who Rip Van Winkle is. Um, this should be something that you look up in an outside source. Who were the Donner Party and what happened to them in the Sierra Nevadas? Again, this is from an outside source. What is um, Cape Horn? Um, where is it? Um, and uh, you'll also have to look that up in an outside source. And what does it have to do with San Francisco and the Pioneers? What happened at Sutter's Mill? Um, where was the bear flag raised and why? These are important um, questions to contextualize the information that Mrs. Mortimer is going to be talking about. What does Saxon discover about her mother from Mrs. Mortimer? And what exactly does Mrs. Mortimer um, give her that's very precious to Saxon? Where do Billy and Saxon go after leaving Mrs. Mortimer's house? Who catches Billy and Saxon in the barn? And what is vagrancy? Um, who is Benson? Is he a helper? Um, and if so, um, uh, I mean, is he somebody that's helping them on their quest? Why or why not? Why does Billy begin to think that any good man can get work in the country? This is from page 291. What is Saxon's reaction to seeing the sea at Monterey? Why do you think she reacts in this way, given that she grew up in Oakland, right, by the ocean? Why is it such a different experience for her in Monterey? Um, who is the swimmer that Billy and Saxon encounter at the beach? What happens in their interaction with him? What are Billy and Saxon able to do for the first time in their lives at Fierce Cove? Who are the abalone eaters, and what do Billy and Saxon learn from them? As always, please post your posts by Friday and respond to your peers' posts by Monday at 11.59 p.m. This week, we're going to be taking the step of creating an outline. You won't actually be turning an outline in. But you will be turning it in as, I mean, you will be creating one and turning it in as a, re as a research journal, but it won't be a formal assignment. Next week, you will be turning in your research essay. Um, so this week is all of the planning to learn how to write it, and next week you'll actually begin drafting it. It'll be due in week 15. So what is a, a research paper made of? The basic structure is that you begin with an introductory paragraph. And in that introduction, um, it, it's usually several paragraphs when you're writing an 8 to 10 page paper. Um, your introductory paragraphs are going to introduce us to the topic that you're talking about. And they're going to lead up to a, um, a thesis statement. That's going to be the most important um, sentence that you write inside of your paper. Your thesis statement should include a, um, the topic that you're writing about and your purpose for writing about it. Then you'll have 10 to, 10, 10 to 12 body paragraphs where you introduce subtopics and you support that information with um, evidence from the sources that you, are, that you are using. Finally, you'll include a conclusion, usually a couple of paragraphs long in an 8 to 10 page paper, and a, a, a beautifully um, created work cited page. So how do you go about developing your thesis statement? Um, now You're now shifting from just collecting information toward, um, toward crafting your contribution to the conversation about your issue and planning your argument. This process begins with your thesis statement. A thesis statement is a clear, focused expression of the main point you want to make. So how do you create a thesis? You're going to begin by reviewing the research question that you created. Reflect on your question. Does it still represent the most important thing you want to say about your issue? 
You should review your notes with answering your research question in mind. Quickly review your notes. Identify important information, ideas, and arguments that you've come across in your reading. Review and elaborate on ideas and arguments you've come up with about your topic. Considering your purpose and role. After you review your research and notes, you should have a clear understanding of your topic and be closer to the main point you want to make in your document. Then, you should go about identifying important information, ideas, and arguments associated with your position. Review your research questions and answers and underline any keywords. Um, draft multiple versions. Um, your thesis statement should go through a ton of drafts. Um, a, a thesis statement is the like most important sentence that you're going to write in your entire exactly. research paper. An effective thesis can invite readers to learn something new, to suggest that they change their attitudes or beliefs, or argue that they should take action of some kind. So for example, there's a thesis statement below that asks, reader to learn, uh, asks your readers to learn something new. Social networking group, websites we don't reveal personal information, people, people reveal personal information. So in this thesis Next. statement, we're going to be learning about human behavior, right, and how humans interacting with social media actually creates um, the revealing factor of social media. A thesis statement where you ask readers to change their attitudes or beliefs. We should view the use of social networking sites in educational settings with a great deal of caution. Or a thesis statement asking readers to take action. People who use social networking site websites should learn how to safeguard sensitive personal information. Your first reflection journal is going to be you drafting your thesis statement. In your journal, complete the following activity to draft your thesis statement. My research question is, my purpose for writing is, I want my readers to do one or more of the following, to learn about something, to change their attitude about, or to take the following action. And you should probably try each of them. The most important words and phrases in my research question are, building on my research question, my thesis statement is, by re but, um, my readers are likely to respond to, the, to this thesis statement by asking the following questions or raising the following objections. I can focus my thesis statement by rephrasing it. By the end, you should have a very clear and focused thesis statement. Once you have a clear and focused thesis statement, you want to create a draft outline. Um, you can begin to think about the three or four subtopics that you want to discuss in order to prove your thesis. You do this by creating an outline. Your outline provides a framework you can use to draft your document. Your outline should include the points you include in your document, the order in which you make your points, and the evidence you will use to support each point. Here is a sample outline format. In your research journal, please map your argument and draft an outline. List your begin by listing your revised thesis I'll statement. You can the change your thesis statement between Research Journal 1 and Research Journal 2 for this week, and I highly recommend it. Um, review your notes to identify reasons that help advance your thesis statement. These are your subtopics. Get, list all possible subtopics, at least 10. How will readers accept your thesis? Consider the organizational patterns listed on the next slide. Choose one. Use the pattern to map the order of your subtopics. Here are the organizational patterns. There's many, including chronology. So if you're talking about something that has events that happen, um, you want to organize it in a time-based order. Um, if you are giving something that um, lays out the uh, distinguishing, distinguishing characteristics of a subject, provides examples and reasons to explain what's different that makes this thing different from other things. That's a definition. Um, you're probably familiar with comparison and contrast. That's what we did in an earlier essay. You look at the similarities and differences among um, different ideas or information. Um, so please take a look at these organizational patterns and see which one works for you for the topic. And be open to the fact that you may choose one and then have to, um, when you're revising, um, re redo the order that you placed your con content in. So create an outline as shown on the previous slide. Um, review your outline by asking yourself, does my outline provide an effective organization for my document? Have I covered all my key points and subtopics? Have I addressed my key points, subtopics, in sufficient detail? Do any sections seem out of order? If you answer these questions, one through four, um, that you think you're doing great and there's nothing to revise, um, you probably want to reconsider it and find some things to improve between the first time you make your outline and um, answering these questions. And the club had very definite rules. 
Finally, this is the information on your research paper. This will be posted under this week's content. Um, I will be reviewing this in much more detail next week. Um, your paper is your first draft of your paper, and that is a very finished draft, is not due until November 30th. All right, guys, that's it for this week. Um, please, as always, let me know if you have any questions. I'll see you online.